<laughs> All right. Hello, okay. Coach. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Hope your family and loved ones are all well. Yeah, the, everything's going according to plan at least. Good, good. Paula Schnurr here, head coach of the cross country track team, having coffee. Oh, wow, I need coffee. With Patrick Tatum, AKA PT, head coach of the men's basketball team. Um, I gotta start first of all, PT. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> It's Diet Coke for me. That's okay with me. I'm a, I'm a tea guy myself. I drink a lot of green tea. I have never had a cup of coffee in my life. Uh, but hey. coffee with coaches, still pretty nice, good ring to it. It works. I get to have a nice little mug here. So <laughs> well, I've never had a cup myself either. Anyway, before we get started, I, I, well, first of all, I think it's appropriate that we're going to have a little one-on-one -on -one here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But the deal is I get to keep the ball because at five foot two and three quarters and you at six, what? Uh, six, six and a half. Yeah. It wouldn't be fair. So I got the ball. I, I'm, calling, I'm calling the shots. I'm asking the questions. Nice. I like it. All right. So we just, um, we're just into two, over two months of this self-isolation. And I know you're at home with your wife and your son and your daughter. How's it been? What uh, what kind of routines do you have? Are you uh, you calling the shots? Are you uh, dropping the hammer? Uh, it's it's been interesting to say the least. I think you know one of the things that we're so used to is at least uh, uh, folks at my age or in my range where you have full time work, so your kids are going to daycare. And essentially the kids are staying at daycare all day and then you pick the kids up at the end of the day. Then you, you know, you get your last couple of hours or three hours with the kids and then it's off to bed and you, you do the same routine again, Monday to Friday. Um, now it's just been, uh, it's been different uh, because they're home all the time. So it's actually a little, it's kind of rewarding if you think about it. Cause really uh, my wife and I were talking about how the kids are just being raised at daycare and now we're actually getting time that we probably wouldn't be getting with the kids on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, comes with some tears and, and some, uh, hey, don't do that. But uh, uh, it's been fun, to say the least. And the schedule and the routine has been, uh, we're very big on like not trying to box them into a certain schedule. But we just have a little bit of a routine where we, like, we get up, we watch a little Peppa Pig, we do an art craft, we go for a walk, it's lunchtime, nap. And then uh, you just try to figure it out for the second half of the day. So it's, it's been fun so far, and uh, uh, I'm enjoying it. Nice. So what grade are you teaching? <laughs> right now we're doing a, a ton of kindergarten stuff. Since uh, my daughter is three years old and my son, he just turned two on uh, April the 3rd. Uh, so uh, we're really just, you know, we got our daughter in the uh, – uh, elementary school book and she's just working on tracing trying to do her letters her name um, and then we do a whole bunch of arts and crafts where we do like a b c d and we make it a, a letter a day so we're running out of days here soon yeah yeah nice um so you've just finished your third season another successful season um you know as a coach we always think about some of the successful moments we have you know you're new um what 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 are some of the, the the memories so far that you've had? Well, so far here at Mac, I mean, I think the biggest memory for me per se is uh, just watching our women's team uh, win a national championship. Right, it kind of lights a fire under uh, not just myself, but I think for every other coach in in the department. Like, hey, we gotta we gotta we gotta work twice as hard, right? So, uh, I think the girls uh, did something special. Um, a year ago, and uh, I think for me that's it's been so uh, gratifying to see because I I travel on the bus with the girls, I watch some of their games, I watch some of their practices. They either practice before us or after us. Um, so yeah, just watching that has been really good. I mean, uh, if if you're talking about uh, just the men's basketball team, I think there's just been steady growth year in and year out. So from year one to year three, which we just concluded this year, 
uh, our guys have gotten better. And obviously there's been new faces because the program has been developing and evolving, but uh, so far I've, I've been very happy with our guys and how they've played uh, at home and on the road. So uh, no big high moment just yet, but uh, uh, little small wins season to season have been, uh, have been a, 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 a put a smile on my face each year. Nice. Yeah, it's going to take time for sure. Yeah. Um, so smile on your face versus frown on your face. What's, uh, what's that look like <laughs> practice? What, what, what turns your head around? Oh, man. That I think crazy. I think a lot of the frowns on my face might come from uh, uh, how we practice sometimes or uh, just maybe some small things that are big things to me, like not having the same sort of like travel gear on so that we look like a unit or in practice not having your jersey tucked in because for me that's just a sign of respecting the game of basketball so you just got to tuck your jersey in and always have it tucked in and if it comes out you got to make sure you have it or a frown on my face could be like you know a, a teammate hits the floor in practice for taking a charge or diving on a loose ball and uh um, another teammate or the rest of the group doesn't stop everything and sprint over to help their teammate up. But those are small cultural things. Um, yep. Anything within the culture that that's not really being, I guess, abided by, uh, that brings a frown on my face. And then uh, uh, I, I kind of nip that in the butt real quick. So, yeah. Nice. Good thing they're just the small stuff. Yeah. That's the it. small stuff. Um, uh, so, uh, what do we got next here? Um, you've, uh, well, coaching for both of us has really changed since, um, since we've been self-isolated and I know if I, I've had to make some adjustments, what have you done to help motivate and keep the guys focused and training and, you know, getting ready for the unseeable future? Ah, that's a good question. It, I think, uh, yeah, I guess everybody's kind of struggling with this as a coach, but um, I think one thing that's been great about our department is our strength and conditioning. They have uh, the Marauder challenges that take place each week. So teams are constantly trying to challenge each other or challenge within your own team to try to stay on top of your uh, strength and conditioning at home. Um, but uh, if you're, if we're going a little bit deeper into just my team per se, um, our guys, we do a bi-weekly meetings on Zoom, uh, positional meetings, and we'll just watch some film and we'll just talk and we'll just really just have it as an open conversation. Uh, there may be a couple times where we've gone into it a little bit more where we're just like, hey, look, we're going to show you clips on you guys. You guys critique it. Tell us where you were wrong or where you could have been better or how it was really good. And we'll just have a conversation on certain things so the guys have been really good and very responsive and I think they want it because there's not much else to do right now other than playing at home and playing 2k or or sitting down and twiddling your thumbs or or, or watching a series on on uh, Netflix yeah I think they're looking mm -hmm. forward to hearing more from coach and uh, yeah yeah and is that something you think you're going to maintain when we come out of this yeah I think you know what it, it, we do a ton of film but I think uh w one of the things I think we could actually use when this is all said and done is just one big fat zoom like a team group session where we're just all on the same page and everybody just gets to talk I, i've done one of those already and it's been very fun uh so i think that that, that might be something that we take from uh this this entire COVID experience and uh run with it nice um so you've come to mcmaster with a wealth of knowledge um I know you competed at uh, NCAA Division One Cleveland State. Yay! You see the jersey up there, <laughs> nice. Um, you've um, you went and played professional foot uh, ba basketball in Europe. You uh, you went on to coach at the junior national level. You've worked with the national team. You've represented Canada as a coach and an athlete. Like your playbook must be this thick. <laughs> Anyway, what when you gotta when you gotta make a difference, you, you'd call a timeout. What what's your go-to play? What's one of your key plays that you you know that's gonna make a difference? Uh, you know what? I, I that one's a tough one because 
there's so many uh, there's so many things you can do, but I think one of the one of the best things, at least for me, is just trying to get our guys um, to score an easy basket. And uh, I don't know if there's a particular play, but I do have a few things up my sleeve where we we run a couple misdirection, like just a misdirection action, so that somebody's looking like they're going one way, but really they're going to drive it right down the lane and score it. That usually gets the bench to get rowdy and loud, and it re reignites the entire uh, in, entire atmosphere on the bench and on the court. And then right away, um, uh, this is a staple that I've been doing for the longest time. We, we we press a lot, so we just try to speed the game up and try to create a turnover to score, so that we can actually score six or eight points in a matter of I don't know 55 seconds. And that usually is a turning point for a lot of the teams that I've coached and a lot of the teams that I've been able to be an assistant coach with. So, uh, yeah, that's something that I have in my pocket that uh, it's, it's been very uh, beneficial for me in the last seven or eight years. I like it. Lots of running. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if it's not basketball, what, what sport would you, what would the other sport you would love to coach? Oh, that's interesting. I don't know. I think, uh, I'm not – once upon a time, I used to be a track guy. Um, nice. If I, if, I were able to, if I were able to show you a lot of the uh, videos that I had of myself when I was like, I don't know, anywhere between the fourth grade all the way to the eighth grade, uh, our household was all about track and field. Um, my family background is Jamaican, and we're very big on watching the Olympics and watching uh, – Usain. Uh, Usain Bolt. Uh, so uh, for us, uh, it's just been, for me, it's been track and field. So if I were to coach another sport, it might be track and field. Not, it's just by coincidence that you're interviewing me and we're going back and forth and you're the track coach and the cross country coach. Yeah. But uh, I think that'd be a nice little challenge. Just something different. You're always outside. And uh, I'm sure you get a, a whole bunch of different athletes that are really good in certain areas. And you got to strategically place people uh, when they're running the four by 100 or they're running an 800 or 400 or 200 or whatever the case may be. So, yeah, I, I think I'd like that. I think I'd like that. Well, it sounds like you'd be you'd be well qualified. <laughs> um, um, like most sports fans, I'm really missing sports on TV. Ooh. And uh, the last few years, I've I've. I've fallen in love with the Raptors, and I know you're a big Raptors fan. What did it mean to you when they won the championship? Ooh, that was uh, – that's a – it meant everything, to be honest with me. Like, the, the, the Raptors organization started when I was, like, a little kid. And uh, um, I think I might have been in the fifth grade. I think it was 95, 96. And uh, uh, to see where it started and – finally getting a championship in the city of Toronto, that means a ton. And uh, for me, I didn't get to actually see the game live because unfortunately we were traveling and we were in the air coming back from Brazil last summer. Uh, but nonetheless, the parade was something special. Uh, it just, it brings so much pride to, I think every Torontonian or anybody in Canada, at least uh, to know that the Raptors have, uh, have, uh, I don't know, just won a national, or I should say a world championship. Uh, it's, it's, it's special, and it, it doesn't happen all the time. So when you do get one, you have to really enjoy it. So, uh, yeah, that, that meant a lot to me, and it still does today. Nice. Um, favorite team? Do you got to say the Raptors? Uh, you have to say the Raptors, <laughs> but I also – uh, say whatever team LeBron James is on. So if LeBron oh. on the Cleveland Cavs, then I'm a I'm a Cleveland Cavs fan. If he's on the Miami Heat, I'm a Heat fan. Right now he's on the Lakers. I'm a Lakers fan. <laughs> okay, then I guess I know the next answer to this question. The one that's out there right now, Jordan or James, <laughs> who do you pick? Oh wow, this is uh, this one's tough. Honestly, it's really tough. But I I pick Michael Jordan. Through really? and through, uh, simply because when I was younger, I grew up watching Michael Jordan um, and the uh, Indiana Pacers and the New York Knicks. And it was just, that was just the time of basketball where I started to love basketball. And it was all because of Michael Jordan. Um, I'm sure kids in the generation today would say LeBron James, LeBron James. But 
I think uh, I speak for myself and uh, LeBron James when I say that uh, we probably both were watching Michael Jordan when we were at the same age. So I, I would say Mike. True to your roots. I love it. <laughs> um, so Coach Patasek gave us a little lesson on um, what to keep in mind when we're trying to catch a football. Yeah. Um, which I thought was very interesting, you know, keeping your eyes on the ball all the way through. So I have a little basketball experience, my little short high school career. Um, always had issues with my jump shot. What, what, any kind of key tips on a, on a, what to keep in mind to, to get the ball in the basket? You know what? There are some key tips, and by no means was I ever like a sharp shooter, uh, but I, I was able to fill it up a little bit here and there. Uh, but one of the things that, uh, uh, that we really talk about when we talk about shooting is really just having, obviously, whichever hand you're going to use, using your dominant hand, and really getting the ball uh, on the tips of your finger and just having a small pocket in your palm. Right, and then having your left hand, or if it's your your non-dominant hand, as the guide hand. So you're really just kind of putting the ball in a place where it can just sit down, and all you're gonna do now is just launch it. But you also have to have this like L shape all the time when you're ready right. to shoot it, right? So now you're ready to shoot it. You got the L shape, and then you usually follow through with your elbow above above your eyebrows or above your eyes. And then you always want to flick the wrist. So um, just a small, quick tutorial. Uh, but I think that's, a, that's one that uh, a lot of people learn as they continue to play basketball, that you have to have that L shape. You've got you to dip your hand in the cookie jar by um, um, breaking your wrist or flicking your wrist. And you really got to spread your, hand, your fingers and get your guide hand and uh, shoot it. So uh, yeah, just a small tutorial. But it's, nice. worked, it's worked for a lot of people. And yeah. The cookie hand thing, I, I will remember that one. For sure. <laughs> I remembered it a little too <laughs> uh, literally. I, I love cookies, so. <laughs> okay, last question, PT, and maybe the toughest. So, I know your wife played for the Waterloo Warriors. That's oh, wow. So, here it is. One-on-one, -on -one, who wins? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I probably win... A couple, just so that you know, she can't have too much up on me, but I probably allow her to win more than uh, I would win simply so that uh, there's no, uh, there's no uh, going back and forth in the house the, later on that day because uh, nice. we're two competitive uh, people and uh, uh, she's, she's probably one of the leading rebounders at Waterloo. So uh, I'd definitely uh, let her have a couple of wins over my head. Oh, you're such a, such a gentle giant. Why not? Why not? Anyway, great chatting. Um, I look forward to seeing you real soon and stay safe. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate it. Hope all is well. Keep safe and uh, hopefully see you soon.